Let's face it, hiring help is not easy these days. Let Zentegger Staffing help you find the right person for the right job. Head over to Zentegra.com forward slash Zentegra Staffing to find out more and let us staff your people needs. Welcome to another Citrix Session with your host, Andy Whiteside and Bill Sutton, your source for all things Citrix. Hello, everyone. I'm Andy Whiteside, and I'm joined today by Martin Dews. Martin, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? So you guys are probably wondering where Bill's at. Well, officially today is President's Day in the U.S., and Bill is on vacation, and uh, I came in and uh, re- decided to record the podcast. Martin was available. Martin's over in the UK. So you guys, you probably don't c- celebrate the U.S. President's Day, huh? Uh, not very often. I say never. No, it's new to me. <laughs> you guys have a uh, equivalent Prime Minister's Day. Is there a, and, and I'm totally throwing out spitballs here. Is there a Winston Churchill Day? I don't know. You tell me. Absolutely not. No, there's nothing of that sort. There are certain bank holidays and uh, uh, that sort of thing, but yeah, nothing along those lines. Yeah. Well, you guys have a lot, uh, a lot, lot longer history than we do here in the U.S., so if you gave everything a holiday that uh, may deserve a holiday, you guys wouldn't work at all. Yeah, that's true. And of course, it explains why it's so busy, this, uh, so quiet this afternoon uh, with all my American colleagues being on holiday. It kind of gives you a little bit of a holiday then. Just, yeah, half a day. Yeah. So uh, Martin, uh, Martin's a technical account manager with Citrix, again, based in the UK. And, and uh, Martin wrote a blog recently called uh, Taking Citrix Workspace Micro Apps for a Test Spin. And I, I found that interesting. I think a lot of you guys can relate. Citrix has been... Um, Citrix has had the uh, the acquisition of um, uh, Sappos, right? Sappos. I found that's right. Yeah, they've had that for a while now, and and really, 2019 Synergy 2019 was the coming out party for that. But you know, micro apps have been around for a year and a half, and I bet there's a ton of us who listen to this uh, this podcast who've either had one one uh, time touching the uh, solution or have never touched the solution. And and Martin wrote this blog to kind of give his impression, his take. Because Martin, is it fair to say that you weren't really sure what to expect about the solution? Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I came to this um, new really. Um, so uh, we uh, we set up some uh, subject matter experts. So the uh, um, some volunteers got put forward for this, and I was one of them. So the idea was to jump in and, and uh, find out how they work, how, how the micro apps worked really, just from from no knowledge whatsoever. Um, the idea being that we could put that through to our customers and uh, and you know spread the word about how these. Uh, how this service works. So I've, I've read through the blog a little bit. Maybe I'm giving a little foreshadowing here, but was it, uh, is it fair to say that you were a little uh, apprehensive as to how this solution was going to add value to customers and users? Um, yeah, I think that's fair to say. Um, it, it, in terms of new services and things like that, there, there was a lot of um, hype, um, let's, let's say. Um, and it was clear that the, the when uh, Citrix first started um, um, doing the presentations and uh, at Synergy and Summit, um, it was clear that, that the services it's a good good technology, but um, in order in how to apply that to sort of my daily work, it, yeah, it was a little bit um, uncertain of how that would how that would fit in. Um, in terms of you know the micro apps and the intelligent feed, um, so yeah. yeah. Uh, once once I got stuck in there, I mean that became clear. Um, it, it's, it's quite it's, it was quite a moment really in terms of um, seeing how that would work. So so Martin, I'm probably already convinced that this is something that Citrix is doing and has to do, but I do have some concerns, right? And it's not necessarily concerned on what Citrix is doing. It's really the marketplace. You're a technical account manager, which means you you interact with a, a handful of uh, specific accounts and by handful, it might be five or 50, I'm not sure. How many accounts do you have under your management? It's around about six or seven thereabouts. Yeah, it varies between technical account managers, um, dependent on the size of the account. 
So we look after the, the the priority customers, so the ones that come through on on the under the customer success services, so the customers, enterprise, the um, size customers that pay for priority support. They have a technical account manager assigned to them. I think, as a summary, it, it's it's our job to to make sure those customers get the best from their investment. Is I think is how we'd put it in in a single line. Well, let's, I'm glad you I'm glad you said it that way. So let's talk through this. When in my world, uh, I've got. 600 plus customers. I think I have three that have more than 80, maybe 90% of their desktops virtualized or 90% of their applications strategically delivered and virtualized. But let's just stick with desktops for a minute. I've got three that have 90% or higher of their desktops virtualized. So that leaves, uh, you know, 647 more that are not getting the value out of Citrix that they should be. And then I see a solution like this pop up and, and this is where Citrix is going and rightfully so, but yet I have, you know, 90, probably 98% or higher, 99% or higher of my accounts that, uh, that have never really realized the virtual app and desktop dream and use that strategically of those, of those seven accounts, you know, without naming them, are any of them 90% desktop virtualized at this point? In what sense? Just explain that again. So take uh, one account, for example. Let's say they have 10,000 users. Yeah. Do, uh, do 9,000 of their users sit down and use Citrix apps or desktops as their primary, primary way of computing every day, or is it a much lower number than that? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah it's probably lower than that. I mean, th there was a, um, a one, I think, at summit, there was a pie chart put on the board. I can't remember the exact numbers, but I think it was about 20 or 30% of, of a customer would, would use virtual apps and desktops. And the rest is something that Citrix couldn't touch until until recently with the, right. the new workspace service and micro apps. And it's those types of users that wouldn't necessarily, wouldn't necessarily go near virtual apps and desktops. Right. And, but, now, and now that's available to them, you know, with, through, um, you know, intelligent, um, to do the workspace with intelligence. Yeah. So again, what you're really saying there is Citrix is using other techniques to try to get people to understand that there's other ways of doing this beyond the virtual app and desktop. But I bet, I bet you're like me and you, you realize that there's still a massive, massive opportunity to get people just to use virtual app and desktop, you know, win, win 32 apps, win 32 uh, desktops uh, that still has to be tackled. So, so I struggle a little bit, right? So we're going to talk about this and I don't, don't get me wrong. I think this is the right thing for Citrix to do. I think we're going to get to that point. We get to the end of this, this uh, podcast for sure. Uh, but then there's a lot of customers that are, are still confused on how they should be using virtual app and desktop to strategically deliver compute workloads to more of their users than just the 10 or 20% or even just the remote users that they currently do. So, you know, this is a way to, to try to try to pull those other people into the fray so that they see other ways to virtualize apps, even if it's just a SaaS app delivered through, you know, this workspace service uh, with intelligence uh, as a way to, you know, to expand the reach of Citrix because there's just so many people that have never got on the bandwagon or on board, I want to call it bandwagon, uh, with the virtual app and desktop piece. Citrix has to continue to tell new stories. But for me, like a partner, and probably for you, we need to make sure we tell both stories, right? That, that virtual app story from 1998 when I first started Citrix, um, implementing Citrix solutions. It's still there. It hasn't gone away. Well, yeah, absolutely. It's still there and it's, usually, it's still a huge part of the business, of yeah. course. Uh, but yeah, with, with the advent of Workspace, um, yeah, as you say, it brings in the SaaS apps and it also then allows you to pull in um, things through, um, uh, through the intelligent feed. Um, through micro apps and, and pulling portions of those SaaS apps or, or through through any APIs that, that are exposed through, you know, it could be an in-house app or, or could be an off-the-shelf app that uh, that can feed into that workspace. So it, it just addresses customers that have not necessarily been traditionally, you know, virtual apps and desktops. You know, they haven't had a need to go near that virtualization space, but now with the SaaS apps um, and Workspace can bring those into that one workspace uh, and you can have all your, um, uh, your your resources there in that single workspace through a single sign-on. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's 
Mm-hmm. That's the, the extension of Citrix's story so that more people can be part of it, right? So let's let's jump into the blog. You, we, we've introduced you. The first section here is uh, the first section beyond the intro is uh, diving into Citrix Workspace, where you talk about you know how it came to be that you had this opportunity. You want to talk through that? Yeah, so the idea was that I mean, this is a new product for for people within Citrix as well as as customers. So so we we in order to be able to sell this to our customers, we have to get experience. Uh, so within the with the various teams, there there was um, a call put out for people just to put themselves forward to to skill up on this. Um, so me being one of them, uh, that was the idea to just dive in there and um, take up some of the training um, and. It, yeah, I went through some of the training on and the online videos. Uh, there was a colleague of uh, of mine, uh, not his blog, in uh, in in my blog here, Phil Whiffen. Uh, he did a uh, quite a simple um, RSS feed for the Citrix blogs. Um, so I just ran through that really. Uh, and within, is, that the, uh, is that the excellent tech brief on Citrix <laughs> Tech Zone? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 a bit um, yeah, but further down on the on the micro building the first micro app, uh, but in that area there on the tech zone, yeah, that that is a, a huge excellent resource for, for things like micro apps and all of the Citrix um, uh, technologies really is, is in the tech zone. So that that one item there, it, it just gives a good overview of micro apps and how it fits together and all the different things like systems of records and. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like that's a good primer. Uh, and then you jumped into the blog that uh, Phil had written. You, 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 you have your uh, third paragraph here in that first section uh, where you kind of define what a micro app is. Do you want to, you want to try to regurgitate that for those who are listening and may not get a chance to read the blog? Yeah. So um, in terms of, so the micro app, it, w- it will just pulls out the relevant information uh, from a, um, from a SaaS app. Um, so for example, Concur or Workday or something like that. Um, I think on one of the previous blogs, uh, David uh, Lestrade went through how all that fits together. But essentially what you're trying to do here is just pull out the areas of the application that are important to to the end user. Um, so a micro app would, be, would enable you to do that through the use of APIs. You pull in the data uh, and identify which parts of that data you want to expose within the feed uh, and then they appear you can then do actions upon that whether it's just feeding in through notifications or acting upon them and, and putting data back into the the the, uh, the destination system so for a good example of that was uh, i think we we keep mentioning is uh, concur so someone's uh, going through a holiday request or pto request and that, that comes through uh, you can do that through through the system uh, rather than diving straight through into uh, into workday and, and through the various different levels and finding the calendar and eventually you, you submit your uh, holiday request and, and then it gets through to your manager and then on the other side that manager would see that in, in the workday uh, in in the workspace feed and be able to approve or deny it. Martin, do you think Citrix has uh, like a number in mind? Is it the top 10 things that you would do within a SaaS app that need to be surfaced and available in the uh, workspace and with intelligence? Or is there a certain percentage? What do you, what do you think their thoughts are on, on what gets brought into this and, and what just gets, you know, maybe a notification and click here to do more kind of thing to take you into the SaaS app? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I don't think there's a particular number of, of something that Citrix would want to expose or, um, I mean, there are a number of um, out-of-the-box integrations uh, for the sort of the well-known SaaS apps that we just mentioned there. So, you know, work, Workday, Conquer, uh, Salesforce, and those sorts of things. So there are, if you go within sort of the micro app builder or, or the micro app service, you'll see a number of integrations that are already there. Yeah. Um, and and that will allow you just to to get straight in there and set up your your first micro app and the integrations. But outside of that, I think it, it's it's open to um, businesses really and, and customers as to whatever they want to do with it. And that that I go into that further down with, with in terms of the micro app builder, uh, and that allows uh, customers to build their own integrations. So basically, as long as there's an API there with the system of record behind that, you could pull data into workspace uh, and act upon it in terms of displaying it, pushing data back through. Um, and it really, from that point of view, the imagination, and the only limit is, is your imagination really. You, you could pull data from anywhere. 
Well, and, and that's what I and that's what I want to pause you on real quick because you, I'm I'm sure will agree with this. Uh, you know, I work with a lot of I work with a lot of engineers that aren't really consultants from time to time, and mm-hmm. engineers like to try to do everything they can do. If there's a button, they want to push it. If there's a if there's a switch, they want to flip it, right? So I think one of the big things about micro apps is going to be for organizations uh, from the business side to make a lot of decisions on what they want to be brought into the micro app world and they want to be able to integrate um, at a high level, right? Uh, And then make sure the engineers know not to try to integrate everything that Concur does, but just a top level of things Concur does. And then, you know, give the user the ability to drill down more versus allowing an engineer to just go crazy and just want to integrate everything Concur does at this level. That's right. I mean, and and the documentation goes into that to to have um, uh, quite a degree, really, in terms of planning. This you would plan out your integration to start with, it and and decide what areas you want to pull through into the feed. Because you know you could have a thousand options within the the back end application, but you might only want to expose a handful of those. I think uh, if you were at um, some, you've seen the presentation with the photocopier in the background and, and the buttons all on there with, you know, the, the 1% on, on each and every button, but then on the big green button, everybody uses this, there's a 99%. And it's, it's that sort of thinking that, that applies to, to the workspace feed really it is the majority of, of users would only use a handful of, of options and it's those sorts of things that you, you want to expose yeah and the request of all the day and the approval of, of uh, expenses and so on yeah, you've got a you've got a picture here in the blog uh i guess the guy's name is uh and and you is that Anuj? yes Anuj. Uh, yeah he's very good at, he, he creates all those himself so those little um sketch notes yeah so that, Way that's, beyond my, my ability, that's for sure. Well, and that's my one piece of feedback. Even if you're not an artist like he is, um, I in the late 90s, I was doing some work with a guy who uh, did a lot of Unix scripting uh, mm-hmm. using Corn Shell, and he would always make me draw the script out before I would start writing the script. And he's right, right? If you can't draw it out, even if you're, you know, very uh, archaic in terms of your drawing, uh, or at least, you know, write out the processes. uh, If you can't write it out with a pencil, like literally he'd make me use a pencil, not a pen, a pencil uh, and a piece of paper. Uh, you need to be able to um, write out your scripts before you actually try to you know, write your script, code your scripts. Uh, I think the same thing applies here, right? You got to have a, you got to have a picture, a vision of what you want to do, at least for version one. Uh, and then you accomplish that and then you move on to version two. You don't just let it, you know, spin out of control while you're writing or in a, making the integrations happen. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, otherwise you end up in the same position you are with the uh, with the original application. You're exposing too much, uh, and that's not the uh, uh, that's not the idea with this. So I think one of the things we want to call out here is within 30 minutes of you starting the reading and investigating how to do this, you had a functioning micro app, right? That's true. Yeah, and that was the result that sort of spurred me on to to do more. Really, is, is it, there was a result. Uh, to to doing something, so I followed the instruction through, and and you know within thirty minutes or so, uh, within the, the the workspace feed, I had blog articles coming up with the details that I needed, providing information. I didn't need to go into my uh, blog feeder. Um, just click on click on the card that comes up uh, and open mm-hmm. appears the the blog itself, and then if you wanted to, you could dive into the the actual blog articles straight from the workspace feed. Right. And, and that was with uh, with, with no coding experience, and that was just pulling the the low code in, interface that allows you to you know drag things around, make it look uh, presentable on the screen without too much trouble at all, really. Now that's a situation where it was one of the micro apps that Citrix had already had some pre code built for, right? That's right. Yeah. So that's the inbuilt RSS integration. So it gives you a, a preset. Uh, layout and, and some of the options there that, that are there by default and you can change them and, and so for example with this there, there was an enhancement that allowed you to pull into the, the html 
uh, detail rather than just uh, some some plain text. It made it look a lot better. Um, but yeah, the the inbuilt integrations will have those already there, uh, so you can modify it and, and move in there and change things around. But uh, that, that gives you the starting option. So, Martin, at this point, did you have single identity and single sign-on into those SaaS apps, or or was that part of the integration not in play at the? Uh, no, not for this one. No, I mean that. that like I say, I, I I'm a beginner at this. So I wasn't going in too deep in terms of things like you know authentication and uh, uh, those sorts of things. So this was just a, a basic. Uh, uh, no authentication needed. Just pulling the feed from from uh, the blog site. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it sounds like you uh, you got excited and you uh, had had one under your belt, right? So you wanted to do more, and there was a podcast called uh, uh, well, it's spread by a guy named Brian Damage. That's the, oh, that's my yeah, that's a Pink Floyd podcast, Brain Damage. Oh it's God, yeah. sorry. That's right. Well, that sounded horrible. <laughs> figure that out. Um, we can cut that one out. Yeah. No, we don't cut any of that. This is raw and real. I would just they'll just let people think Andy's stupid, which is. Probably <laughs> Um, all right. So, uh, with that said, you wanted to go do another one. What happened on this second uh, attempt? Well, this was the same process, really. So, uh, I, uh, having done the the blog feed uh, first of all, and that worked okay. So, I thought I'd go through it again and, and try it with a different uh, um, blog site. And this one being just an RSS feed for um, for a podcast, Pink Floyd podcast, um, and. It was that simple. I didn't even need to refer to the to the the, the previous blog article. Uh, it was just fairly straightforward. So I just goes to show how uh, how intuitive the the interface is really in terms of yeah. pulling things in and, and making it look presentable. Uh, and you know, before long, you, you have a, a meaningful feed coming in. Mm-hmm. So in this case, you had a feed coming in from a Pink Floyd. Um, um, podcast and I guess notifications from that podcast started showing up within your workspace. That's right. Yeah. So um, when when a new post is uh, is submitted, uh, it, the 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 micro app integration does a synchronization synchronization at, at regular intervals, whatever interval you set it to be, mm-hmm. uh, and then when there's a change of record in there, it would then uh, trigger a notification that pops up in the workspace feed. Right. And, you know, I, we didn't talk about this in the beginning. And a lot of times I bring this conversation back to um, the mid 90s when we had the active desktop, which was Internet Explorer overlaid over top of your desktop or Google had Google had a similar thing or has a similar thing. And then now with Windows 10 and I haven't figured out yet how to turn this thing off, but I log into my Windows 10 box uh, at home mainly um, yeah, at home for sure. And I get notification after notification after notification uh, similar type thing, but in this case, it's you know, business-related content and things that you really do need to know, not just what uh, what Bing's trying to tell me. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think David mentioned this in, in the, the the previous um, session you did. Is the, this is where the workspace intelligent features come in? So it, 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 it has some machine learning there, so it knows what you would generally do within the workday, and it gets better over time. So uh, I mean, I, it, it didn't. I've not got that far with this, but that's the idea, I suppose. It then presents you with the the feed cards that are relevant to you at the time. So if you've, you know, if it knows you're you're doing this certain activity at this time of day, it will present you with those cards. Or if if you've only got ten minutes of time before your next meeting, it would slip in a couple of um, you know expense requests, uh, approvals, and those sorts of things. Wow, that that that's amazing, right? It's like having someone to. To manage you, uh, yeah, I can't help but bring this up, and hopefully, it don't come back to bite me. But uh, my, I've got teenage kids, seventeen, seventeen, and fifteen, and um, my teenage son. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen to him when his mom's not there to manage, make sure he's getting the most out of his day and and getting things done. I, I guess he'll be like me, and he'll find his way through, which is probably one hundred percent true. Um, but it's interesting. It's it's kind of like that, right? Somebody there to have an idea of what you're supposed to be doing, when you're supposed to be doing doing it, and giving you reminders that hey, it's time to do this. And if you don't do it, you know, push a little harder. Yeah, I think the whole idea of the the workspace feed is, is just to make the employee more productive and, and give them better experience. And you, you don't want to be switching out of, of, of one application and into another and then you're spending lots of time context switching. Um, the idea is you stay in the same workspace and you've got things that feed into there that are relevant to you. 
Um, if you want to, you can go outside of that. But the idea is that your feed will be uh, will become more relevant as time goes by. I would guess. You know, as as we're talking through that, I I talked about it being a way for someone to manage you better. You talked about it being a way to manage yourself better. I think in reality, it's probably both. It's yeah, it's using technology to find a way to better manage people at the same time, giving them a way to, you know, bootstrap themselves or, or have opportunities to bootstrap themselves. That's right. Yeah. Just making better use of, of the time that you have be yeah. more productive. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, next section here says uh, getting more advanced and it sounds like maybe you dug into, uh, you know, an, another attempt and something around an energy organization. Yeah. So the idea with this is, um, uh, on moving on from from the integrated um, um, or the, the out of the box integration, so R S S feed in this case, um, there's the option for customized uh, integrations. So these are based. Or the, the the example I did is based around um, APIs. So um, uh, so long as a, a website uh, or a service has an API that's, uh, that's public facing, um, either with no authentication or or, or with authentication, this two or three different um, options for authentication but this one in particular had you had i was keeping it simple so no authentication at all um just to, to use that api to see what data i could pull into the workspace feed and whether that would be meaningful and, and I, th- I thought i'd just pick one at random uh, and I, I'm, I'm interested in sort of the uh, energy feeds and renewable energy and th- those sorts of things so there's the national grid they supply um uh, power generation data um, through a public API, so you can see uh, what's generating, um, how much data, you know, how much energy. So, for example, wind might be generated forty percent, coals not so much, and so on and so forth. So that was the idea here, really, is just to see if I could make use of that and pull that into the workspace feed, whether or not that is um, a valid use case for an enterprise or a business. It didn't really matter to me. I just wanted to make sure I could pick a random API and and try and make that feed in and make it meaningful. And yeah, without too much trouble, it's there. And it's still still within my test uh, instance now. And hope. It popped at the weekend, saying there was fifty odd percent of uh, the UK's power is generated by wind. It's been quite breezy lately. <laughs> Some fairly large storms by British standards. So. Yeah, no, that that's a great example of you know personal things that you could bring into. You, you know what that reminds me of? You know, hundred percent what that reminds me of, and I think this is very true. And and then it's probably going to tie. Uh, did you guys have the phenomenon in the late nineties, early two thousands of the weather bug app? Yes. Yeah. That's, this is like the weather bug, but not a single app doing it a, you know, consolidated place to get all your notifications. Uh, like, you know, weather alerts that, that thing was, that thing was the vein of my existence as a help desk person and it consuming resources all over the place. Um, uh, yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, and, and there's you could just search around the web for for public APIs, and there are uh, there's weather sites that, that expose their their data through APIs, and you could easily feed those into into Workspace. Uh, yeah. Just yeah, and dependent on if you could imagine you've got a let's say a call center, and they need that information or you know the weather for the day or um or for example something i'm just playing around with now like i said the weather's been pretty bad around here and there's been lots of floods and things so um the environment agency have an api for um flood alerts so i'm just halfway through pulling that data in to to flag up into workspace of um flood alerts so when there's a new flood alert locally or whatever it, it triggers up in the feed um and the data's there you can then drill down into where it is and what sorts yeah. of severity and so on it just gives an example of what you can actually throw in there really well and that's interesting right because the other day we're all in the office here and there was a tornado um warning not a watch but a warning so there was a there were multiple tornadoes in the area and i heard everybody's phone go off and for the most part i totally ignored it i don't know if everybody else did but i totally ignored it didn't know anything about it so i got home and my kids were saying you know dad where did you take cover at? oh i didn't right so that might be an example where an organization the very first thing they might do is put in weather alerts into their workspace so that uh you know there's no excuse for you not to be paying attention i was heads down working therefore i missed it yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, and, and the idea here is is the limit. There is no limit, really, as long as there's an API 
uh, you could pull data or push data to and from an application and then you, you just use the micro app builder and, and integrate accordingly. It's, it really is quite easy. I'm not a coding person uh, and but without too much trouble I could make the integration work and pull data out and, and the data is dynamic from from the back end table that it pulls through so you can make it meaningful on on the on on the notification that pops in is called a card so you can have text on there that that is, is dynamic based on the data behind it and the notification that pops up so 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 martin let me hold one second i got to get this slack alert off my screen that's kind of a joke but i really do have slack <laughs> notifications <laughs> popping up all over the screen right now. Somebody must be working besides me today. Um, so I do want to bring up, take that moment to point out, like you were just pointing out, that uh, you know, if the application, the backend service doesn't have an API, there is going to be a massive need for applications that are legacy or, or are missing pieces in their API uh, to have that part of development happen. And so you know, as Integra, we're, we're investing heavily in uh, building a development practice, one, because we need it to anyway, but this is going to open the door to get involved with a lot of organizations and their application needs. Yes, Citrix is making it easy to tie into an API, but what if there's not an API? Yeah, so going to have to help develop that. So that opens up another opportunity for um, for partners, uh, I would think, in that you know they they could provide. And I, and I can't remember the name now, but the, probably just before Christmas there was a post put out for um, for one of the partners that, that was providing a service for 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 workspace. And I guess some of that could be to you know look at their traditional applications and and if there are parts within the application that need to be exposed. And, you know, write some code to expose that through through an API. Right. Yeah, the, the, the opportunity is limitless, but you have to be able to, you know, you have to be able to seize the opportunity and create what needs to be created. All right, so, um, so let's go through, okay, you got your five points here, you know, create micro apps, find an API-based something, service, uh, integrate with that, test the connection, make sure it works, you know, design the micro app, page through the builder uh, and then set the update frequency it literally is at a high level that easy right um yeah uh, there's not much more to say around that i mean the, yeah the, for for my purpose and in terms of me having an introduction to it that 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 was enough for me um and what that has done uh, is is push me to 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 try and do more integrations uh, and, and the colleagues of mine are, are doing more uh, in-depth integration with things like G Suite and so you can push and pull things from calendars and and that sort of thing but um, yeah from my point of view and I think that this is the important point to put across to uh, to customers really is, is on the face of it uh, I mean if, if my experience was anything to go by I was thinking yes this is it's great technology but how does it apply to me um, and I, it, it was hard to realize that until I actually got stuck in and, and used it and now I can see lots of different use cases and, and I end up thinking like at the weekend oh, yes yeah, lots of floods nearby perhaps there's an API that could be useful to fold that mean you know, to pull that into the feed uh, and it gets it got me thinking around how how it could be useful, and then now I'm thinking along the lines of how this could be useful for for our customers. You know, the ones that don't traditionally use virtual apps and desktops, but they have a need for consumption of data through the SaaS apps or uh, those sorts of things. Um, and the important thing to state that is just it's for customers to get stuck in and then get and use it. You know, request a test instance and uh, from the developers on and, and and try it out. You know. You know, that there's training that that's forthcoming. Um, some Citrix training, CWS two zero six is the micro app training uh, that's coming out now, and uh, I'm booked on that just to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. I would recommend just to get out there and have have a go, really. Yeah. No, I think that I think that's it, right? You just tied up your your last section is believe the hype, and it sounds like you went from uh, having some interest and some vision as to how this might extend Citrix within the customer base beyond the virtual app and desktop, which I will highlight again for probably the tenth time, and I, I talk about it every day. There's there's still a lot of run rate in the virtual app and desktop. Absolutely, yeah, work. yeah, yeah. But, that's uh, not going away at all. Um, well, and I don't think customers see the value in that nearly as much as they could, even from just the basics of a security play. However, 
um, you know, the opportunity to get in front of customers and help them integrate the rest of their application story into their day-to-day life or work, including those Win32 apps, because those show up in that same pane of glass, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that's where Citrix is going here. And, and without a doubt, you know, talking to other people, seeing your experience, it is, it is a good solution and a good idea. You know, time will tell if, if Citrix can pull it off or not, but uh, there's definitely a need to aggregate your application world beyond those Win32 apps. Yeah, I'm certainly seeing a lot of interest from from my customers once now I'm starting the conversations and, and now I can see the benefits. It's um, um, People are starting to ask more questions and, and uh, yeah, definitely there's lots of interest around how this could be exploited in certain scenarios really. So. Do you think it's a situation where once they do one app and see the vision come to life for them, it's just going to start the train rolling down the track? Yeah, I think so. If my experience is anything to go by, it's, um, yeah, uh, get, you know, try it out, see, you know, do a few test integrations and, and, and maybe play with, you know, your own data. If you're a customer, just pull up, you know, see what you can pull in that's relevant to to your business and uh, and then take it from there, I would say. Yes. Well, let's let's test that theory. So you did these three apps, right? How many how many additional use cases? And we don't have to go through them by any means at this point. But how many additional use cases? You know, why you you know, your kids' soccer game, or you know, walking around the mall, or or grocery shopping? How many additional use cases do you think you've come up with in your head that you're you, you're itching to try? Um, probably about well, three or four, I think. I mean, the one that I've tried recently. Um, uh, uh, is is the electricity company has um, sort of agile rates and they change on a half hourly basis and sometimes when there's lots of excess power around that energy that 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 price drops below zero so basically the electricity company pays a customer to use that electricity but you need to be made aware of it and, and that is exposed to an API you could so I've I've integrated that into the feed so it pops up and says it's got below this value I turn on your dishwasher or you know something like that yeah. um, yeah, I'm just sitting here thinking right now, I've got so many of my own personal use cases. I, I would love to know when my, you know, when I'm not at home and, and my son's gaming, whether they, rather than be my Microsoft report at the end of each week, I would love to know real time you know, every 10 minutes or so, you know, what sites he's on and be able to pick up the phone and say, hey, you're supposed to be doing your math homework. It looks like you're gaming. It's, 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 <laughs> So whether that's a pet enterprise use case is, is probably questionable, but you, you get the idea of, of how it, it's versatile in terms of what you can pull in there. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I got from it. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, if, if you have a customer that uh, they've got uh, lots of engineering staff that are not necessarily users of um, uh, apps and desktops, or they, they're not sat in front of the screen, they're out in the field. Um, so, uh, Fixing the train tracks, for example, uh, there may be a, a need to to close a section of track or re- re-request certain tool sets. They could they could do that from from their workspace app on on, on the mobile phone. You know, you, they go through there and find the the action uh, request closure on a track. I'm just thinking sort of mm. on the fly, really, but you get the idea, and that would then feed into the back end system. But they don't need anything much more than than the phone in the hand, which you know, let's, everybody's got one, you know. So I'll give you an example, right? My, uh, my chief operating officer had to send out an email Friday letting everybody know that today was a holiday. Well, guess what? I was one of the people that didn't know today was a holiday. I was planning on coming into work. I mean, there's, there's so many use cases. It just, it probably just would just keep rolling on and on and on. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And like I say, the best way is just to, um, to have a go. Um, if, you, if you're interested in that as a customer, then um, yeah, dive into the developer workspace zone and, and request a free instance from there. Um, yeah. Before long, you can get up and run in, try out some micro apps, and yeah, and if come and speak to us, come and speak to the, your Tam. Well, and I'd be a bad sales guy and a bad business owner if I didn't point out that you know Zintegra is developing a, a staff of people not only to help with the basic micro app stuff, but those back end APIs and a lot of the decision tree stuff that we talked about a while ago. Yeah. You need to get together on the front end, and you know now we're talking maybe DevOps and things that have to go into application development. And you know it's it is 
trivial like what you've done here and it can remain trivial however if you want to take it to a whole other level um which you should there should be opportunities to do that that adds business value and saves the company money um you know there's partners like us that can help with that absolutely it can be as simple or as complicated as you as you want it to be and then obviously the more complex you need additional skills and uh, i guess that's where partners come into play no well, Martin, anything else you want to say or uh, convey before we let you go? Um, no, um, no, it's been useful. Um, I've, uh, yeah, thanks for for sparing the time. But like I say, if, um, there are lots of resources out there. Uh, have a go. Um, get into the developer zone. Uh, book onto the training, um, and then yeah, come and speak to us, and we can talk forever on, on workspace and micro apps. Right. Well, Martin, if you have other, uh, other blogs that you write, please, please let me know, or please reach out and we'll, we'll jump on do another podcast. It, you know, the whole goal here is just to give people uh, other ways to consume the content. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they're really busy. They don't have time to, to necessarily read blogs all the time, but while they're walking the dog, they can maybe uh, get through all or portions of these podcasts and hopefully people find that valuable. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it allows them to, like you say, consume away from the desk. Doesn't it? Yeah. Well, Martin, thank you very much for the time. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming in on the holiday. <laughs> yeah, well, I was, don't worry. I was going to work anyway. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Take care now. Thanks for listening to the Citrix Session with your hosts, Andy Whiteside and Bill Sutton. A special thanks to our guests, podcast produced by Pete Downing. Head over to zentegra.com forward slash podcast to listen to all podcasts in this series.